All right. Um, yeah, so hello, my name's Amanda. Um, yeah, I'm originally from Texas, um, but currently living and working in Berlin. Um, have been here for four years. And yeah, in this talk, I wanted to first start with early works. Um, yeah, just going kind of back quite a bit just to kind of see slowly the thread um, from the concepts that I've been working with and seeing how they've kind of slowly transformed into the work I'm currently doing at the residency. Um, yeah, so I wanted to start with this piece, um, a super old one. Um, it's a figure drawing. Yeah, how I got into art was through figure drawing. And this um, sketch was actually in an art class I had in college. And yeah, so at this particular day, our, our teacher brought in her husband, who was a um, yeah, musician and professor at the school nearby. And so, yeah, for like the whole six hours of the class, he was just practicing the cello while we sketched. Um, and it was just like a super amazing kind of magical uh, moment. And I love having this sketch, this representation of that moment, also just like in the gestures that I was using too. Um, and yeah, every time I look back at it, I'm like immediately transported back into that time and that place and kind of the feeling I had while making it. Um, yeah, and so that kind of feeling you'll see I'm kind of chasing that a bit in the, the work that I've made since. Um, so yeah, I kind of fast forward a little bit. Um, I did an artist resident or not an artist residency, but a study abroad um, in Italy for a summer. And yeah, that was my first time in Italy. Um, was really excited. There was obviously a lot of like visual stimulation, a lot of new things, but also new sounds as well, which I was really drawn to. Um, and yeah, this is the first time I didn't have a studio space or anything like that. So it was really just kind of exploring, walking around um, and making just like in the actual um, city. And yeah, up until now, I had always made work. Um, yeah, typically in a studio space or my apartment. Um, and typically with music or headphones on. And this was kind of the first time I, I decided, oh, like what, how about I just like spend a whole day without listening to anything and just kind of see like what happens. Um, and yeah, I started really getting interested in sounds um, around me. And I really wanted to kind of document these moments. I knew I didn't live there. So um, yeah, these were just new things that I would kind of like to keep in store some way. So I started just drawing. I used whatever I had, which was a sketchbook and pencil, um, and started, yeah, drawing the sounds around me. And so also like a piece of this was I really wanted to document um, these sounds. So I made a key. This was the first ever, yeah, soundscape that I did. And so I decided to make a key and kind of write exactly roughly where I was. Um, because yeah, I knew that level of detail I would most likely forget pretty quickly. And yeah, it was a nice way to kind of get access back into this memory in this moment. And yeah, I kept doing that. Oh, and also something that was interesting too, I think to point out is I think typically, or at least now, if you're going and traveling somewhere, you would be, I don't know, like I could have recorded, um, with my iPhone, like sounds or taken photographs. Um, of the place, but um, back in this time, there were no smartphones. Um, so yeah, I was kind of just like using the tools that I had to kind of keep in store these moments. Um, yeah, and so here you'll see basically just like any kind of found material that I could, I would use. Um, yeah, I had to be pretty light since I was just, yeah, walking around and sitting in random places doing this. So just this from like a scrap of drawing paper and found some threads. So I was playing around with um, maybe using different materials for different sounds. So in this case, yeah, the other thread were church bells. And yeah, more soundscapes. And then, yeah, I started exploring potentially isolating certain sounds or sound pairings. Um, so you'll see that here and here as well. And yeah, here as well. And I like to kind of point 
uh, call this one out just because this is where I feel like the sound shapes are really starting to look like kind of musical no notation or like a musical score, something like that, which is an idea I'm still interested in. And yeah, basically, um, yeah, as I kept making these soundscapes, the list of the sounds that I was documenting kept growing. And so then I realized, oh, I want to put this like all together, kind of make potentially a dictionary out of them. So I started just writing them on multiple pages in my sketchbook and just kind of organically started organizing these sounds. So you'll see that through the colored pencils I'm using, but also kind of on the left right here, like just, um, yeah, organizing them in different buckets. And then on the right, you can kind of barely see the like first time I started really wanting to kind of um, use these sounds, um, but in a new way where it wasn't about the documentation of like where I found these um, sounds, but kind of using them in a new way on their own. Um, yeah, so I started uh, creating systems that I could use um, these sounds in. And yeah, sometimes I could get a little complicated. In this case, there was basically seven steps, seven things I was breaking down. Um, so yeah, in this uh, step, it was pretty highly controlled, I would say. Um, but even from the very beginning, I, I knew, like I didn't want to fully control the work that I was making and like every decision that was behind it. So I added in this level of randomization. Um, and yeah, in this case, I used whatever I had around me. So I made these little paper dice. Um, and yeah, for each of the different elements of the system I was making, I would put them on the different sides of the dice and then roll them. And then that would help me decide like, how I would make um, a piece. And yeah, this is the first time I was really playing around with that whole like um, control and then like relinquishing control and kind of going back and forth within a piece. And then, yeah, um, then whenever I left Italy, I was back living in Baltimore, Maryland, and was still like super excited and interest in, interested in these systems I was making and also just, yeah, recording sounds. Um, except now that I was back in Baltimore, it wasn't a new place for me. I was pretty familiar with it. Um, and so I started thinking about, yeah, how could I make kind of just like everyday moments interesting? Um, so in this case, this was just kind of like a study that I did around um, me taking a shower. So I called it like a shower ritual. Um, so on the left hand side, it's all the sounds that I recorded during um, the shower. And then in the middle, I started organizing those sounds. And then I created a little system where, yeah, basically I would transform all of this information and data into what you see on the right hand side. So this is the same information, um, just displayed in a totally different way. So this is also uh, like the me taking a shower, um, which, yeah, I find super interesting. Um, and yeah, I think this was just kind of like um, an exploration or like study of this, but I still to this day would love to explore how this like kind of last visual piece could be shown, yeah, on a larger scale in an installation type space, something like that. And yeah, I started just doing more explorations around like sound, um, except here, I was wondering how it would look and kind of how the process would feel if I was uh, kind of transcribing a song. So I would listen to a song and then documented it first kind of in this middle layer of the, what you see in pencil. Um, tried to be pretty detailed about it and made my own, um, yeah, I guess musical notes. And then, yeah, from there, I, I kind of, translated that into two other um, forms. So you'll see like this kind of top um, pencil section and then in color as well. So just kind of seeing one type of um, information, but in multiple ways and ways that you typically wouldn't see it. Um, and yeah, I find in general that personally it stimulates my brain, not only when I'm making it, but also afterwards, kind of your brain trying to put together the pieces and see um, like where this potentially came from. And I think that um, 
in some way um, kind of creates this feeling of presence um, when you're looking at a piece. Um, yeah, and then I moved to Austin and I was uh, working at an artist studio there. And yeah, at this time I was really interested in words. Um, and so, yeah, I basically, I was still interested even in the sounds that I made um, back in Italy, just was, yeah, finding other ways to, to kind of communicate those words or those sounds. And so here I thought it'd be really cool to make this um, poem of sound. So it was all the sounds that I had collected from um, my time in Italy, organized. Um, and yeah, it also just gives that rhythm, I think, that I saw and really liked in my um, like sound kind of shape pieces. Um, but yeah, with words. And yeah, I wanted to add also this element of like, uh, the actual viewer kind of feeling present in that moment by changing um, their sense of touch. Um, so they're standing on this thing that I made, which is um, like these cut out uh, cotton sewed sculptures um, of the sounds. And so, yeah, whenever you're reading the poem, you're standing on it and kind of like yeah, feeling gravity a little bit, feeling like a different texture you typically don't feel on your feet while you're um, reading it. And yeah, that kind of takes me to my more current work. So yeah, I think COVID was a pretty um, defining moment, I think for a lot of people and including myself and my work. So yeah, once COVID hit, um, yeah, obviously a lot of anxiety, um, and questions of what was happening. And so that kind of pushed me back into what I felt really comfortable doing and yeah, made me feel comfortable basically. Um, so I started going back and doing these um, walks and then yeah, recording the sounds that I had. So I made this um, sketchbook and we just kind of do that every day. And yeah, it was also the first time that I was recording um, and documenting sounds in Berlin. So that was interesting too, just kind of seeing like if the Berlin sounds were different um, as to like the sounds in Texas versus Italy, et cetera, like places that I've been. Um, yeah, and also during COVID times, you're doing basically the same thing every day. Um, and it's really hard to like find something special in those moments and also moments of isolation. So. I thought, yeah, this was kind of a really nice way of like looking back on those times and seeing, yeah, like these really pretty mundane moments of just going on the same walks every day, but kind of picking out these like unique um, sounds from those days. And then, yeah, also I've started trying to see if I can kind of like evoke some of those feelings that I have during the process of actually me making uh, like going on these walks and making these soundscapes um but yeah like sharing that with the user a little bit more or the user <laughs> the viewer a little bit more um yeah so i made this stop motion animation um where i was yeah recording the um the flow i guess yeah like the the walk um with the sound as well And yeah, this was another piece, um, yeah, still pertaining to sound, um, but really I feel like uh, this was one of the pieces where I was kind of taking the sound out of its um, original location and just kind of using it more as a tool to make something new. Um, so yeah, this is, I've made, I'm on my fourth one where I'm making these kind of large, um, 
pieces um, and yeah, hoping to kind of make something um, with yeah, all these that I'm collecting. And yeah, um, I wanted to kind of stop here and just say that, yeah, up until now, obviously you can see that my work for the past few years has been like super um, focused around sound. Um, and yeah, I think sound has been the key way that I've been able to access uh, this like larger feeling that I'm interested in, which is like the feeling of presence, um, both in making the work and also like afterwards, just kind of like viewing the work. Um, and yeah, that feeling of presence, I feel like um, I'm slowly getting just more and more attuned to, which kind of takes me to my, uh, the work I'm doing currently in the residency. Um, which is a bit of a shift. So yeah, still, um, I knew I wanted to kind of like branch out. I had a feeling I wanted to do something a little bit different, but still have it be focused around presence. Um, and I think the, at this moment in time, the reason I wanted to do that is because of COVID, uh, I was spending majority of my time online, both work and in personal life, um, which, and I think, yeah, pretty much everyone was. Um, and there were some good things about it. It was nice. I was able to stay connected to people on some level, um, but also I was questioning and like the downside of spending all this time um, in the virtual world. And also uh, during the residency, uh, I started getting very interested in this unveiling of the metaverse. I feel like this just watching this, it kind of like connected a bunch of things to me for me. And I was like, oh, like, I think this is the moment in time where I want to, um, yeah, like really branch out and like explore this, this feeling of presence in a virtual space. Um, and yeah, because watching this video to me through my kind of like lens of thinking about presence. Um, yeah, Zuckerberg like talks a lot about this feeling of presence and feeling like you're almost there in this virtual space and like oh it's almost like too real um which i find really funny and fascinating so yeah and i mean it's just a matter of time until technology just like seeps in more and more into our lives so i just thought this would be a pretty good time to start at least for me personally thinking about um my relationship with uh presence and how I see it in both the physical and virtual space. So this takes me to some super early like initial explorations I'm taking um, in this space. So yeah, not so much connected to sound, um, but uh, yeah, exploring this kind of virtual world. So first I'll try to think about different uh, mediums that I wanted to use. And so I thought, you know, because earlier, um, and my initial sound scapes, um, I just kind of used like the tools that were readily available around me. So yeah, like we didn't have smartphones, however, now we do. So kind of a ubiquitous medium is taking photos. Um, and then also trying to figure out subject matter. And so I landed on hands, um, mainly because they're a way that humans like can really express themselves um and connect and communicate with other people um but also yeah hands you use a lot with technology and tech devices as well as in vr spaces um and yeah it is pretty funny like uh how it whenever you're in the vr space like you do oftentimes your hands are you can see them in the virtual space um and due to like technology uh just not being smart enough yet like they kind of like either you only see your hands like floating in the space or like they chop off chop off like your body so you only see like your torso and you have no legs uh which is really funny so yeah <laughs> these images kind of show uh just this hand sticking out um and yeah also in terms of the uh like style of these images. Um, I wanted them to look like they were potentially edited digitally with Instagram filters or something like that, um, but they're not. Uh, it's all just made uh, with different like materials on site. 
so yeah, a lot of things I'm experimenting with for the first time. And here's another kind of exploration I did. And yeah, uh, once again, just something I'm playing around with, but yeah, um, thinking about how else I can use um, hands. So I'm basically Photoshopping these hands outside of the images. And I'm using these cropped hands potentially for a collage. And then, yeah, here's another exploration that I'm doing with hands as well. I just wanted to try out um, doing video um, and adding in an element of sound into my work. So here we go. Uh, 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 Yeah, so there, yeah, once again, like exploring this like virtual and physical world. Um, and even the sounds themselves, I wanted it to be a bit of a question of what it is. Um, but yeah, it's just kind of like animalistic, eerie, ominous um, sound. Um, and yeah, just also just like the hand gestures and stuff, uh, kind of playing around too with like just how human um these gestures are and yeah also i did another quick kind of video exploration because i was um while i was thinking about hands i started questioning and wondering about like other human body parts um yeah that are affected by technology or that we use a lot with technology um so yeah one of them was our eyes and yeah, since we're staring at screens all day. Um, and also just thinking about like other digital, um, uh, I don't know, like um, sounds, I guess. Um, so I've, I've started getting interested in, yeah, just the phone uh, vibrations and different um, alarms that we have for, you know, Google calendars or a new message, stuff like that. Um, and also just kind of, um, enjoying those sounds, but also connecting it to our concentration. Um, so yeah, this was just uh, another exploration of that. So yeah, I thought this was a kind of a cool exploration just because with the repetition of the eye movements and the sound, uh, one, it creates a really interesting rhythm, I think, but also, um, yeah, it kind of takes the eye out of like a natural space and almost like makes it feel a little bit like unhuman-like or robotic, um, which I would love to explore more. And so, yeah, now it kind of takes me to what I'm currently working on and working on next. Um, so definitely still exploring. I still feel like I'm in like really early phases of this new um, study of this, yeah, natural and virtual world um, related, yeah, to the body or body parts. Um, and then also in parallel, I am still um, really interested in the sound work that I'm doing and hoping to do some collaborations soon um with musicians and yeah i feel like this work i'll probably always low-key be doing because it's pretty grounding to um yeah my life and any other work that i make and then yeah i also wanted to bring up too that next weekend uh the collective i'm a part of 
is going to be um, a part of this event. So yeah, next Sunday, there'll be a, and also I'll be showing some of my drawings, which will be a part of it, but yeah, a performance and workshop as well. But yeah, thanks. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you for the presentation and also um, introduce us to these two different um, lines of work. Like, I think, um, uh, of course, we can see the importance uh, in, in sound and music, as you said, um, but this new area that you are experimenting with and trying to, to um, get closer to other techniques and, and that presence of the body, I think that is uh, really interesting. I think I would like to, to make some questions and starting with uh, this sound that is so important and we have been talking um, from the beginning in our meetings. Um, I think uh, um, it's clear not just the impact that has for you, but also um, some kind of um, yeah, like a, a, a pulsion for it and, and trying to reach and understand and kind of um, um, take a diary almost about, about what is happening through sound. Um, but I'm curious about how is your relationship with sound and music mm -hmm. out of your artistic practice? That means that, um, for example, you were talking about uh, uh, wearing headphones all the time. So, um, how it is for you out of these uh, notations yeah um yeah i think in general my relationship to sound is yeah like when i'm not making work i have sound around me almost 24 7 so it's almost yeah i have to make active um decisions when not to uh, like have sound uh, around me um, yeah, so I think that also maybe uh, why is why the work is so grounding. Yeah, because often like if you just have uh, this type of kind of white noise um, around, you can kind of feel pretty in your head. Um, so whenever you kind of have like active, intentional sound that you're working with, um, or it's like a part of your focus, it's it feels very different. But yeah, um, in general, I have quite a bit of sound around me. Well, I think that, um, uh, for example, when I'm, I'm most stressed or, or, or most anxious, I feel like, uh, I feel overwhelmed about um, um, influences and inputs around me. So music kind of gives me like the zone to not move around so much you know like it, it gives you a little bit of headspace somehow um but also i wanted to bring the issue about um now with these new projects that you have sight uh hearing um but also these tactile uh references um how is this kind of um jump or, or or changes between um the different senses for you i, I feel like there is almost something uh, synesthetic about um for example translate sound to a drawing or or these codes that you 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 are really used to and it seems really easy for you yeah um yeah i guess i i do feel like maybe it it's intuitive. Like there was nothing, it wasn't like a conscious choice to, mm -hmm. to even start making this work, or at least it didn't feel like it. Um, yeah, so I guess the main element is, uh, yeah, I think I have like maybe just a, a, a bit more sensitivity to sound mm -hmm. uh, potentially. And yeah, and but also like I know, when I'm kind of in the right, like I have to be in the right zone. Like it's not just like in regular life where I'm like yeah. <laughs> listening and like translating stuff. So like, um, yeah, I think it's it's there's like an I have to be in yeah like a unique headspace, like very calm and kind of like really trying to absorb what's around me. Um, and yeah, I think also just uh, my brain is most happy when I'm uh, 
in that flow or in that like translating of one thing to the other um and like ha like having my hands be busy so i think yeah it was just kind of like a collection of things and this is kind of what felt or yeah, yeah. Was the most intuitive thing. yeah also using this word that you use in the presentation about that presence that you have is somehow like uh, forcing you to be present on that that sound that the street um that i agree with you 100 percent. that usually we're just running from one point to another so uh you don't listen you don't even realize about anything uh is in what in that moment that you are focused on what is happening surrounding you and, and as you were saying that um you can focus on on hearing and listening surrounding you but also uh your side is focused on those drawings so it's somehow a, a, um i don't want to say therapy but yes a, a moment of of um focus even meditation somehow in in be present at that moment like um you can be focused on your breathing but also you can be focused on your surroundings so I feel is is that kind of exercise to um, get out the house, you know, like um, um, connect somehow with the city. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think it also like, uh, yeah, makes me shift my head space just with everyday things or like just with the walks, you know, like, yeah, if you're doing the same walk every day with not in like an active way it's i probably would not oh i wouldn't be able to do it um or would be like listening to a podcast or somehow like getting out of my head in like a different way but yeah this kind of feels like a pretty active uh like intention of like being mm -hmm. present in in whatever it is that i'm doing yeah um i feel like um I, i'm really amazed about uh your kind of ability or, or skill to translate and use these notations and also to to translate sounds to codes these small um, drones that you have been doing with symbols and icons um even this this uh shower an analysis or or um even i don't know this is some kind of a um it feels like is an statistic impression or data graphics that you are taking um, again uh, a translation of a moment of experience to to something graphic. Um, how did you develop that language and capacity for translation? Because I think it's not so easy to synthesize, to organize. Um, how do you do that? process and also how are you able to even imagine to do that yeah i mean i think probably the biggest thing is it also was rather intuitive um i think that's just how my brain works it's like trying to break down everything mm -hmm. into uh categories i guess um but in a healthy way <laughs> and yeah also i think when i was initially making this work it also was a time in my life where I was very interested in math. Um, not so much anymore. I don't remember <laughs> anything, um, but still that same like headspace uh, is, I still have that and it's interesting. It's just like not as uh, math focused. Um, so I think that definitely inspired it. Um, but yeah, I think also it was just like, um, yeah, I don't know, like I had this particular uh subject matter like sounds i had a, a a list only like a limited number list and i had a limited medium of you know whatever tools that i had and so then i started just thinking about like what are all the possible uh mm -hmm. ways these two things can kind of work together um and that's how i started kind of thinking about the different like the system that i would make of like um and just like all of the different elements of like how you make a piece so like up until then you know i was I don't know, like traditionally learning how to draw and paint and stuff like that. So you think about like composition, different colors, 
um, et cetera. So I was just trying to like break down those kind of basic things. Um, and then, yeah, like mix it up. <laughs> um, just kind of using all these like traditional artistic tools and stuff, but in just like a, a different way, like my own way. Yeah, like mixing somehow is um, connecting different interests uh, in, in the same paper to say in, in somehow and, and mix the methodology of, of maybe math and that organization with the um, the techniques that you can get from um, fine arts, uh, usually education. Um, mm -hmm. As we totally can see that jump in your um, in your practice that you go from uh, a really controlled graphic work um, to the last videos that you show and also the the photographs um, in which you are present, like not the like really present in the, in your artworks. Um, your body uh, takes almost this. Uh, uh, protagonism or, or and also for expression but also for um create this kind of ambiguity uh the sound is 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 also around creating this abstraction but um how is this jump for you and uh how has been working with your body and putting you in front of the camera even for just an eye i think is a big jump Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think in I see like a trans or like a correlation of yeah the sound work to more of like the body work in terms of the I mean that feeling of presence that I was talking about. So I feel like in the sound work, it was more like that presence feeling was in the actual process of when I was mm -hmm. like how I was making the work. Um, but then I just kind of wanted to like zone in more and more like on just that like feeling of presence um which i think is in the mind and like an easy way to like explore the mind is through the body and like body because that since they're connected so that was kind of like i guess my uh decision into wanting to yeah like incorporate my body into the work or at least bodies into the work um yeah and i guess how it felt yeah because i guess also it was something where i almost didn't realize how absent i was from the, the work before like with all the soundscape stuff like yeah i guess we had chatted about that before where i was like oh yeah like there i mean of course like my uh myself is in it but um yeah like my physical presence is kind of missing in it and so yeah i was like an active choice to kind of start exploring yeah, it makes that. sense it makes sense what you were saying about that um that the presence is in the process but somehow you're also um giving a, a step back and uh having some distance about uh the sound is what is happening you are just taking down some notes um so yeah it makes total sense when here you are being really present uh you are being part of that artwork so you can um start doing this exercise of even mirroring in your artwork somehow like a reflection um i think i'm i'm really eager to follow how this continues uh, I think it's really amazing the work that you have been doing this month. Um, I would like to ask you about uh, the uh, the future and what is happening next, but also uh, I would like to ask you a little bit about that collective that you were telling us uh, that you uh, will show uh, one of the pieces next week. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, I'll be showing the uh, some of the uh, those large uh, system sound pieces uh, mm -hmm. where I have like a collection of four. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be showing those like in relation to some other another artist's work in the collective. Um, and yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's like the whole 
uh, a lolly event is kind of around presence and around like uh, the digital and physical world and like how we uh, communicate in that. Um, so I thought it was actually perfect to <laughs> show this works. Um, yeah, but the yeah the collective is just kind of a collection of seven artists who are um, yeah more or less interested in these um, ideas. So we'll be doing for the first time like a um, kind of performance piece mm -hmm. together um very site specific um yeah which i think is very exciting um but yeah i guess in terms of future work um yeah i really want to keep pushing this like exploring new mediums just because yeah up until this moment i've kind of been um using the same medium so i just want to like keep exploring and like staying in that kind of divergent phase of like not being too judgmental or critical about anything and just like um, yeah. trying stuff and then kind of seeing uh what is the like what i think is most promising to kind of like push even further mm -hmm. um but yeah i think in general i'm more i'm like super interested in how i can like further have the viewer kind of feel present when seeing the work so naturally mm -hmm. i'm thinking kind of um yeah like how i can activate multiple senses at once in the space uh -huh. um, that's what i'm most interested in in the future cool that seems like a, a challenge but uh you're already <laughs> trying with with some of the new videos um so i hope this uh, uh next exhibition and show with the collective that you have goes really really well uh we will be um following you also because you have this uh, instagram takeover this weekend on uh, glog hours account so please uh, share everything that uh, you want with us and um, yeah thank you so much for sharing thank you so much for uh all the courts that you have been uh showing in the residency to be able to uh go out and and i don't know i think that is really brave like not always happens in practice like we are used to continue our um our practice and uh i think what you did is really great so thank you so much amanda yeah thanks so much thank you so much everybody and um you can keep uh watching the presentation and the work by amanda in the instagram takeover so thank you bye bye awesome thanks bye